In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, dear fellow redeemed by the blood of Christ. On that very first Christmas night, which our children did such a job telling you about, nothing went according to Mary's plan. I don't think that Mary planned to travel so late to Bethlehem during her pregnancy. I don't think Mary planned to get late to Bethlehem so that there was no room for them in the end. I don't think Mary planned to give birth to a baby while in Bethlehem. I don't think she planned to give birth in a stable surrounded by animals. I don't think she planned to have to place her child in a manger, a feeding trough for animals. And I don't think she planned that the first visitors to see her son wouldn't be grandma or grandpa or some other close family member or friend, but instead were some stinky, smelly shepherds from a field nearby. Nothing went according to Mary's plan on that first Christmas evening. But everything went according to the Lord's plan. You see, let's not think that all those events that the children told you about were just some random chaos. Let's not think that all these events happened to Mary just so that she would have a good story to tell later on in her life about how difficult the birth of her firstborn son was. Instead, God was in control of all those events. He had to be in control of all those events. For this birth was the most important birth in the history of the world, a birth that had been prophesied about for centuries because this birth it was the birth of a savior. That's why Jesus was born, to be the savior. It wasn't because Mary and Joseph wanted to start a family. Mary was still a virgin. And it wasn't because he wanted to prove his superiority or dominance over his creation. While he is an omnipotent king, his kingdom is not of this world. Instead, Jesus was born to be the Savior. He was born to be your Savior. For as the angel said to the shepherds, today in the town of David, a Savior is born for you. He is Christ the Lord. And since he was born to be the Savior, since he was born to be your Savior, Everything that happened that night was all according to God's plan. For not only did God want to differentiate this baby from all the other babies that might have been born on this day, but on top of that, God wanted to proclaim to everyone who this baby was and what this baby would do, that he would come into the world to pay for all of your sins. And by controlling all the events on that first Christmas night, that's exactly what the Lord did. For think about it. The Lord controlled Caesar Augustus himself. Also that he issued that decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world, forcing Mary and Joseph to travel to Bethlehem. All so that the Savior of the world could be born in that tiny little town just as Micah had prophesied some 500 years prior. And God controlled all the rooms in the inn and made sure that there was no room for Mary and Joseph and the baby. All so that the baby could be born in a stable and placed in a manger. For not only did this differentiate him from the rest of the babies born on that day, but on top of that, it showed us that this baby was not coming to do something great and glorious in the eyes of the world. He was coming to do something very humble, die a bloody death on Calvary's cross, for that's how he would win salvation for you. And finally, God was even in control of the shepherds on that first Christmas evening, sending an angel to them to announce the Savior's birth, all so that the shepherds could go to the manger and worship this newborn king, all so that the shepherds could return and tell many other people what they had seen and heard. Yes, nothing went according to Mary's plan. No human being would ever plan to have a birth like that. But it did all go according to God's plan, 
to proclaim that this baby is the Savior of the world. And because everything on that first Christmas evening went according to God's plan, you can be sure of this. You can be sure that everything that happens in your life, even everything that happens to you this Christmas, is also going to be according to God's perfect plan for you. For in the end, it doesn't matter if Christmas goes exactly the way you had it planned. In the end, it doesn't matter if you get to gather together with all of your family, if there are no arguments with your family, if you give the perfect gift or receive the perfect gift. Those are wonderful blessings from God. Praise God for them. But in the end, that's not really what makes Christmas. Instead, ultimately, what matters is that Jesus was born for you. The Savior was born for you. That's what really matters this Christmas. And therefore, just as God controlled all the events of that first Christmas so that Jesus could be born to be your Savior, so also rest assured that God is controlling all the events that happened this Christmas as well, also that you and many other people can hear the good news, believe in the Savior, and receive from this Savior forgiveness and eternal life in heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll continue by singing verse 1 and 4 of A Little Town in Bethlehem, as printed in the bulletin. Amen. 